Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and on this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at five new feature enhancements in Photoshop CC that are going to make it easier for us to work with paths and shapes. So let's take a look at the first one. Now, this will help us work with paths and shapes plus any other kind of layer, and it's called isolation mode. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to select not only the background layer, but then all of these rectangles right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down the Command key with the Move tool, and that's going to give me this first layer. But then I'm actually going to use the Layers panel to select all of these different rectangles. So here is the first one that I want selected, so I'll hold down the Command key and select that. And then we'll come down here, and here's the next one. So we'll select that one, and that one, and that one there. So as you can see, sometimes it takes quite a while to select layers, and you might have a lot of layers in your Layers panel. And there might be times where just to clarify things, you might want to only view those layers. Well, we have this new mode under the Select menu called Isolate Layers or Isolation Mode. And what that does is it temporarily hides those other layers in the Layers panel. Now, let's just be clear, I don't mean hiding like toggling on or off the eye icon next to those layers. It's just hiding them from actually being displayed in the Layers panel. So this can be really handy when you have a really complex layered document. Now to toggle that off, you can see right here there's a little toggle in my Layers panel, so we can simply toggle it that way. Or we could assign a keyboard shortcut to the Select menu to isolate layers. And we do that by just going under the Edit menu, coming down here to our Keyboard Shortcut Editor, making sure that we're editing our application menus, and then down here under Select, where it says Isolate Layers, we can go ahead and enter in, for example, Command-I. Now it is warning me that it's going to remove it from this other command, but I'm OK with that, so I'll accept this and then click OK. Now, no matter what layers I have selected, when I tap Command-I, I'm going to toggle into Isolation Mode. Command-I again will toggle me out of it. So like I mentioned, this can be used with any kind of layer and a mix of any layers. So I have a pixel-based layer up here, plus a bunch of different shape layers. Excellent. Let's take a look at this second kind of group of new features. They're small, but I think you'll see that they can help us be much more productive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. And we're just going to grab the Pen tool, so I'll tap the P key. And I'll click and drag out my first anchor point. Now, as soon as I let go of the mouse, I'm ready to lay down my second anchor point, and I'll go ahead and click and drag. But sometimes you don't quite lay down that anchor point in the right location. Well, as long as you still have the mouse down, you can hold down the space bar, and you'll notice that I can now reposition the anchor point while I've got my mouse down. Then I let go of the space bar, and then I let go of the mouse. Again, I click and start dragging to draw the path, hold down the spacebar to reposition the anchor point, let go of the spacebar, and then I can continue on dragging that path. All right, let's go ahead and tap Delete, and Delete again in order to get rid of those. Now, another feature that we've changed is a behavior that happens when you have maybe one path selected, move to another layer, and then come back to that original path. So let me tap the A key, but that gives me my Direct Selection tool. I actually want the Path Selection tool. And I'm just going to click to select this path here. We can see on my Layers panel what layer is now targeted. I'm going to move off of that layer and target another layer, and then I'm going to return back to it. And you'll notice that that path is no longer automatically selected. So we changed that because of the feedback that we got with the behavior. Customers would prefer it to behave like this. All right, now if I do have a number of anchor points selected, so let's switch to my Direct Selection tool, and I'll just click and drag. You can see now I have a lot of different anchor points selected. So now if I just want one anchor point selected, and I basically want to deselect all of the others, all I need to do is click on that anchor point. So you can see that it's selected, all of the others are deselected. So kind of a modification of behavior, or maybe you could consider that a new feature. All right, let's go ahead and just draw a new shape here, and then I'll just click to drag that out. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and deselect that, and we can do that by just clicking on another shape, and then I'm going to tap the A key to select my direct selection tool again. Now, in previous versions of Photoshop, because this shape was not selected, I'd actually have to click on it twice if I wanted to select a corner anchor point. But now I can simply click on that corner anchor point, and you can see that that anchor point is selected because it is solid, whereas the other ones are hollow. All right, let's go ahead and delete that by tapping the Delete key, and I'm going to zoom back out here. Now, this next feature was added in Photoshop CC, and it was the ability to actually click and drag to select multiple paths, even if those paths were on different layers. And you can see all of those layers have now been selected in my Layers panel. But sometimes we want kind of a more subsection of layers to choose from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top layer here, and then I'll hold down my Shift key, and I'll go ahead and click on the bottom layer. So now all of these small circles are targeted in my Layers panel. They're not necessarily selected, but they're targeted here in my Layers panel. Now at this point, you might have an illustration or an image where you want to isolate your selections of paths to only be paths on these layers. So you'll notice here that with my Direct Selection tool, I have the option to either select all layers or just the active layers. So once I've made a selection of layers in my Layers panel, I can change this or flip this to just the active layers. Now I can deselect here so that none of the paths are selected in my image, but those layers are still targeted. So now it makes it much easier for me to click and drag select over an area in my image even though there's paths on other layers, because those other layers weren't selected, I cannot select the paths on those layers. So this toggle here between all layers and active layers, you can actually assign a keyboard shortcut for that as well. And let me just point out where that is, because it's not under your application menus. Instead, it's under Tools. And it's all the way down here at the bottom. You'll notice that we can add a shortcut. But you can't use more than one character. So I can't use, for example, a keyboard modifier and the H key or anything. I can only use a single character. So there's two characters or two letters that aren't being used by default. That's the N key and the K key. So you might want to try one of those. So I'll assign K, click OK. And now when I tap the K key, we can see up here in the upper left how I'm toggling between selecting or drag selecting between all layers and just the active layer. All right, I'm going to tap that one more time so that I go back to my all layers, and we're going to switch over to this image right here. Now, if you draw a lot of paths or use the shape tools or the pen tool, you know that we can combine shapes together in a variety of different ways. All right, well, I want to select these top three circles, so I'll grab my Path Selection tool and drag over them. And now I want to use the Combine menu. So you'll notice right now by default it's just combining the shapes. I could also choose to Subtract from Shapes. I could go to Intersecting Shapes or we can exclude the overlapping shapes. So that's really great that I can pull all of those from the menu. And in fact, there used to be keyboard shortcuts that we could use in order to change these, but they were limited to just the first two. So for example, if I tap the plus key, it would go ahead and combine those shapes. If I use the minus key, it would subtract. And now in Photoshop CC, if I use the divide key, then we actually get the results of the intersection. And if I use the Multiply key, you can see that it's changed here to Exclude. Now, the one caveat here is that the new keyboard shortcuts, they actually are wired to an extended keyboard. So in order to get the Multiply key, you're not actually able to use the Option plus the 8 key or the Alt key plus the 8 key. Instead, you actually have to have an extended keyboard that has that little multiply. It's not an asterisk. So again, as we can see, if I just drag over here, we can see this shape, and we can see how these shapes combine quickly by just using the plus, the minus, the divided by, and the multiply.
And the last feature that I want to talk about has to do with the live shape properties. Now, I know this has been discussed in a lot of tutorials, and I've actually already talked about live shapes, so that's not really what I'm going to present here. But I do need to draw a live shape in order to show you this kind of refinement made to this feature. So when I click and drag out a live shape, my properties panel always pops open. So even if I don't want to make any changes to this, if I close my properties panel and then I click and drag out another live shape, the properties panel is going to fly open, which if you didn't know in Photoshop CC about live shape properties, this is great because it's presenting to you right here. Oh, look, you can go ahead and change the corner radius of that shape. But eventually, you probably don't want this to pop open all the time. So as long as you have a live shape selected in the properties panel, you can use the flyout menu right here to toggle off this kind of feature to show on shape creation. So now I can tuck away the properties panel, and I can continue to drag out my live shapes, and you'll notice that it won't pop open automatically. If I want it open, all I need to do is go and reveal that. Excellent. That wraps up all of the changes that have been made to the shape tools as well as vector tools, including the isolation mode. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.